This is a pre-lab lecture for the Introduction to Equilibrium Lab in Kim 1B. This lab is all about Le Chatelier's principle, and it's a very qualitative lab, meaning that we're really not going to be working with numbers this time, not a lot of calculations, so it's not quantitative, so it's very qualitative. We are going to be looking at several equilibria, and we are going to be stressing the system to see how they respond to the stress. Does it make more product? Does it make more reactant? Does what we add have any effect at all? So we'll be looking at Le Chatelier's principle and the application of it to several different equilibria systems. So we'll be looking at Le Chatelier's principle and its application to equilibria systems. Now if you need a refresher on Le Chatelier's principle, you can always go to YouTube and watch the last video for chapter 14 posted uh, as a lecture video and that should give you a very good overview of Le Chatelier's principle and some of the background information you need to be successful in this lab. Now because we are not doing any calculations there's going to be a lot of writing down what you observe and explaining what you observe so you need to make sure when you write your explanation it's a good explanation it's not just a short word or two it needs to actually explain how this is causing a shift with Le Chatelier's principle. If you have questions of whether or not you're giving a sufficient explanation, please ask your instructor. So the first equilibrium we're going to look at is an iron thiocyanate complex. We'll be looking at an iron 3 plus complex and it'll be in aqueous solution and we'll be adding thiocyanate ions to it. And the thiocyanate will th and the thiocyanate will bind to the iron to form the iron thiocyanide complex. And the nice thing about this reaction is that we'll be able to detect changes just by simply observing colors. So that's one of the nice things about transition metal complexes. They're very bright and colorful and when they undergo changes it's usually followed by a color change and so it's easy to observe. It's one of the reasons why I like being an inorganic chemist. I like the pretty colors that we see. Now also too this lab will set us up to make sure that we understand the principles and it'll help us preview some of the types of equilibrium systems we'll be studying later on in further labs, in particular the qual scheme. And the qual scheme is what your lab practical is based on. So after we finish section A with the iron thiocyanide equilibrium, we'll be adding different reagents to it and seeing how it shifts the equilibrium. We'll also be adjusting the temperature, we'll cool it off and we'll heat it up and we'll see how that also affects the equilibrium position. The second system we'll be looking at is a chromate dichromate equilibrium where the CrO form 2 minus is a yellow complex and the dichromate the Cr2072 minus that's an orange complex. And we'll be adding acids and bases to these to the system to see how those affect the equilibria. We'll also be looking at barium oxalate and oxalic acid equilibria to see how those systems are affected by stresses to the systems. And section D will be looking at saturated solution equilibria. So in this case we're looking at how something dissolves and it creates a saturated solution. So this is where we'll be looking at KSP, so the equilibrium constants associated with solubility. And then the last one we'll be looking at another coordination compound, this copper tetramine complex but we will have different things in solution that will be competing. So we'll be looking at the effects of competing reactions. Now some pitfalls to avoid. First of all, the dropper bottles are very messy, so you may want to use gloves found in the back of the room just to keep things off of your hands. Make sure that you pay close attention to the concentrations listed on the reagent bottles. A common mistake is adding the wrong concentration of hydrochloric acid to the saturated sodium chloride solution. The concentrated HCl is in the tiny glass bottle with the dropper. Now this is concentrated HCl so be careful and do not get this on you because it will burn your skin. If you do get it on you make sure to rinse the affected area under water and notify your lab instructor. When you're making your observations and you're describing the solutions you can write that something's clear or opaque or cloudy 
to describe you know the clarity of the solution but clear does not mean colorless Windex of course now they make all kinds of Windexes they have green Windex and they have yellow Windex and they have blue Windex so the window cleaner it's clear but it also has color like the blue Windex now water is clear but it also is colorless so be careful when you make your distinctions in your observations when you're heating your solution in section A part 4 the warm water bath does not need to boil so if you boil it it accelerates a side reaction you're not going to see the effect that we intend for you to see so don't boil the reaction you're just looking for a change compared to your control also be careful not to contaminate the reagent solutions and solids. When you're getting your solid out, make sure you use a clean, dry spatula. A common problem is by the end of the lab, the thiocyanate crystals, which are supposed to be white, is at the end of the lab, they're usually orange or pinkish because people have contaminated the solid. So make sure you use a clean, dry spatula when getting out your solids. When you're asked to add ammonia to your reaction, ammonia when dissolved in solution makes ammonium hydroxide. So when you look for ammonia, look for ammonium hydroxide instead because ammonia reacts with the water to form ammonium hydroxide. This will be important to remember for your lab practical because you'll have to add ammonia to some of your reagents when you do the lab practical and you'll be looking for ammonia and you won't find anything that says ammonia but there'll be ammonium hydroxide in there and if you ask me you know where's ammonia I won't be able to tell you during the lab practical or your lab instructor won't be able to tell you also because we're looking for color changes you need to be careful of seeing other colors in the room interfering with the colors that you see in your test tubes so hold a white sheet of paper as a background behind your test tubes to help you see any color changes Lastly, make sure that when you add your reagents together that you mix them well because so you need to agitate your mixtures so that you don't get a different reactions on the top of the test tube compared to the bottom of the test tube. So make sure you mix things up well when you add things together. So this completes our pre-lab lecture for the introduction to Equilibrium Lab. Be sure to ask your instructor if you're not clear on any of the instructions and be sure to listen to your instructor in case your instructor gives you any additional information relating to the lab or safety. Enjoy collecting your data.